Hey guys, it's chainsaw season here in Australia and a customer bought their saw in after trying to service it themselves, get it all up and running. They wanted to put a new spark plug in, so they pulled the boot off and they found that the boot and the little barb came off of their HT lead. He tried to get it back on, he couldn't do it. He bought it in to me and I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm gonna show you a few little tips and tricks that are really gonna make this process easier so that next time you wanna change your spark plug and this does happen, you'll see how easy it is to fix. It's such a lovely day, we're gonna stay out in the park and do it. So, he had actually cut his coil wire too short. Fortunately for him, his coil can actually have the wire replaced separately. Not all can, especially not the more modern ones. In this case, I picked up this wire today from the steel shop, so we're all ready to go. The first thing I want to do is remove about a centimetre's worth of the insulation, and that's just going to allow me a better connection when the barb is actually seated and in place. Just like that. Now, here's the real trick. Grab yourself some heat shrink tubing. This is really, really important. It's going to make your life so much easier. I'm going with two sizes here. I'm going to put them both on first. Slip those all the way down. Now I'm going to separate these wires, half one side, half the other. Like that. And now you take your barb. Don't put your barb in place like this and then punch the hole through. What you actually want to do is to put your barb slightly to one side and so it's slightly behind the end of the wire so that when you push it round onto the end of the wire, it's really nice and tight. So we'll push these back. I'm going to place the barb in place to one side so I want it to be about there if I show you closely the end of the barb is going to be a tight push if I fix it there it's going to be a tight push to get it onto the middle I'm going to squeeze that in with the pliers trying to keep it going as straight as I can now we're right down in the middle watch this it's hard but I'm gonna get a good ah, push right where it needs to be which is there. You can see how stiff that is to get in place and also how these wires are actually now going to be wrapping around. I'm going to keep pushing that barb all the way through like that. And that's exactly what we want. We want wires either side of the spring so you've got really good connection and that this coil itself of wire and this barb is really tight up against the HT lead. You don't want this to be able to flop around side to side. It's a big mistake, you can end up chasing your tail. Now what we're gonna do is put in the smaller of the two heat shrinks. I'm gonna slide one up. And this is gonna further reinforce this barb and coil to the HT lead. I'm going right up to the end, like that. And now I'm gonna heat that one up first. All the birds are singing. When that's good and hot, it is there. I'm gonna put the second one on. Again, all the way up. There we go. So it's really nice and snug at the end. Gosh, they're noisy, aren't they? I do apologize. So, so far, the barb is really snug on the wire. We've doubled it up with two layers of insulation or heat shrink tubing. I've wrapped the wires from the HT lead around the springed coil of the barb. And now the last step is to get the boot on. Now these are really tricky. You can see just how tight of a hole there is there. So from here, we're gonna get a little bit of oil into the end of the HT boot here. This is just three in one. You can use anything, engine oil. You can use two stroke oil, it really doesn't matter. I'm just gonna wipe that over the spring too. A bit on here. And the last stage is I'm going to warm this beginning part of the boot up with a cigarette lighter. My goodness, they're noisy. Like so. And now I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to hold right up to the end here. I'm going to squeeze down this way. I'm not squeezing sideways because the, the barb can still spin. I'm supporting it here. I'm then going to take this boot, hold it in my hand the bottom in, the top in, squeeze hard with my pliers and we're going to wobble it in, push that in and now I'm going to pinch it, go back slightly with the pliers and push again. Keep going, I'm just feeding it in 
My hand's going to be slightly in the way here, but just bear with me. We're nearly there. Oh, there we go. And now we have, you can see our barb at the end there. Hopefully you can see it. Can you see? All ready to go back on to the saw. So there we go. A few little tips like that can really make the difference between success and failure when you're trying to reconnect your barb and your boot to your HT lead. If you don't get that barb really nice and tight or the spring part of the barb really nice and tight on the end of the wire, you'll find it will just sloppy either side. It'll be a nightmare to try and get it in the boot. If you don't put the heat shrink tubing on, you'll find that the barb will actually come out of that wire and that's very frustrating too. And you can't reuse holes that you've made. You need to make another one. And if you've done that a couple of times, you're gonna to start to shorten this wire and it's just gonna get more and more frustrating and more and more expensive for you. Talking about HT leads, boots, Naturally, we have Spark. If you want to know more about my recommendations for Spark testers, here's a video up here. I hope you enjoy it. Until next time, I'll catch you very, very soon. Good, that's a great video.